Hey, sorry I haven't posted in a little while. I have been really busy on a tourism video shoot. All I can say about it at the moment is that it's in Asia and I hope to be able to post it in the next month. In the meantime, I've come up with a little filmmaking exercise that I thought would be kind of cool. The rules of this exercise are that you take one camera, one lens, and a gimbal if you've got one, and go out and just shoot some daytime footage and try to create a couple daytime moods out of the same footage. So what I did today was I brought out my A6500 with the 18 to 105 lens on it. This is a nice zoom lens. And I put it on the Moza Air gimbal. And uh, Kobe and I went to this lovely little island outside of Hong Kong. It's called Lama Island. And I just shot whatever we saw without any real regard to the mood of what I was shooting. And in editing, I'm gonna try to swing that footage so it goes toward a happy mood and maybe toward a more dramatic mood. So the goal here for me is to create a couple moods out of the same footage. Feel free to try this yourself and post a link in the description of this video. Okay, so now let's go to the footage and I'll talk a little bit about it as I work with it. So let's start off with creating the color mood. Well, before I do any fun color grading, I'm actually just going to do minor correction on each clip to make sure that the color is at a pretty good starting point as far as exposure and everything goes. For clips like this, which are just a little bit underexposed, I would hit Apple 6, and then that brings me to my color board, and I bring up the highlights of my exposure. And if I want to check to see if those are in the right range, Apple 7, then I just look at this histogram. I want the highlights to be peaking right around 100. It's not a hard and fast rule. You kind of have to also just look at the shot and see if the shot looks good. For shots like this, looks like it's maybe a little bit overexposed. So I'd want to drop the shadows just a little bit and maybe drop the mids a little bit too. Sometimes you get a buildup in saturation when you darken the image. So I counteract that by dropping the saturation as well as the exposure. I've been using a new plugin called Epicolor. This is a paid plugin, it's not free. Epicolor is an artificial intelligence color plugin which is supposed to analyze your clip and automatically give you better color. Well, I found its abilities in that realm to be somewhat limited. It tends to add too much contrast out the gate, so I have to reduce that contrast. And any other effect that it has on the clip is really subtle and a little too subtle for my eye. I'm not too sure actually what it does uh, in terms of improving the color of the clip. But one thing that it's great at is adjusting brightness because if you grab your brightness here and you crank it up a bit, the highlights do not blow out. The mids and the shadows go up a bit, but the shadows don't raise too high. So it, it keeps everything so that it takes up the entire color gamut and it also avoids blowing out the highlights. And if I were to try that same thing with the built-in color grading tools, you'll notice as soon as her face starts to become visible, the highlights are blown. Now for a shot like this, I might want to try to highlight her face just a little bit more. Just do a little mask that brightens her face just a little bit. So let's go into the built-in color corrector. I'm gonna choose Add Shape Mask. So that creates a shape like that and bring it so that the whole mask kind of fits on her face, maybe with just a little bit of edge around it, something like that. And then I just go in, take the exposure, raise the highs a bit, and maybe raise the mids just a, just a bit. It's a real subtle thing. If her head moves, I might have to track it a bit. So I put one keyframe at the end, one keyframe at the beginning, and I move it so it covers the right part of her face at the beginning, check it halfway through, and check it at the end. Let's move it just a little bit like that. And that way, the mask follows her face throughout the shot. It's accurate enough. Shots like this, kind of nice looking as they are, but I think I'm going to boost it just a bit. So I'll keep that sky from blowing out. I don't think I want to boost the mids too much because then it gets really flat. For something like this, maybe just raise the mids a bit. Now I'm going to add an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer in Final Cut is actually just a blank title. You can get one that's pre-made. I'm gonna put a link so you can download the same adjustment layer. It's free. There you go, blank title goes on top of everything. That's an adjustment layer. So what does adjustment layer mean? It means it is a layer which will adjust everything below it according to the effects that you put on that layer. I'm gonna put the effect TKY, shadows and highlights. 
What we've got here is something that can adjust your highlight brightness, your shadow brightness, and also the color, midtones, and shadows. So you can use it either correctively if you need to darken your highlights or raise your shadows. For instance, if I want to just boost the overall shadows of my clip, I can do that, and the shadows go up, sort of like the Photoshop function. You can use it like that, or you can use it the way I'm going to use it, which is as a way of tinting a portion of your image to get a natural looking color grade. The built-in color grading tools actually do offer this exact same functionality, but I found for whatever reason, the colors just look more natural when I tweak them with this plugin instead of the built-in tools. So that's why I use the shadows highlights tool instead of the built-in tools. So I'm gonna to try to take this very warm image and cool it down. So the cool tones are right around like the 180s to the 220s, somewhere in there in terms of the degree of the hue. And you can see which hue I'm adjusting just by the color that shows up here. So let's take that to something like that, 210. Let's just try 210 and bring up the saturation that adds that color to my mids. Now you have a much cooler image. This is what it was before and this is what it is after. Now you also get some darkening. So I counteract that by also increasing the brightness so that it's generally as bright as it was before I started messing around with it. That's the quick and easy way to get a cooler tone overall to your image. And then if I want, I can cool down the highlights as well. Now cooling down the highlights will also darken the image. So I make sure that my highlights are still hitting white and it's not hitting 100. So I'm gonna bring up the brightness here so that it does hit 100. I just check it across my other clips and I see how balanced they look. Inevitably, there's gonna be some individual tweaking per clip. What I'll do is I'll go into each individual clip under the adjustment layer and I adjust the brightness and the color balance of the original clip. That way I sort of get an instant feedback of how it looks with the color grading applied. And if I wanna check how it looks without the color grading, I just turn off my adjustment layer. Disabling the adjustment layer is V, by the way. As a final touch, I might want to desaturate my highlights a bit just to give it a little bit of that bleach bypass look. So a shot that would otherwise have had a lot of warmth in the highlights still can now be much colder. So that doesn't desaturate my whole image, it just takes down the highlights a bit. Again, nothing's fully automatic. Every shot's going to require a little bit of tweaking until there's sort of an overall balance. Okay, so now I'm gonna create the warm, happy look. I already have my adjustment layer and I already have the shadows and highlights effect on the adjustment layer. I've chosen a frame from my video which has a lot of contrast, a lot of different colors. It already looks pretty happy in tone. The sun was naturally just sort of orangey and pleasant looking. So I'm starting from something that's pretty close to the look I already want. I'm just gonna push it a little bit further in post. So let's start with our highlights. We're gonna start with 46 degrees as our hue. Everything sort of in the 30 to 60 range is gonna come across as warm. As you get up towards 60, it's gonna add green. And as you get down toward 30, it's gonna be more, let's say, purple. So now I'm gonna really crank the saturation just so I can get a good sense of how the color looks. That's obviously way too much. Say about there, 16%, cool. Have we lost brightness? Eh, not too much. Midtones, I'm gonna take the saturation of the same color up in my midtones. I like to have my clips coming out looking natural, just with a certain prevailing mood or tone. I check it across multiple shots, generally looking pretty nice. I can probably take the saturation down overall. I'm using the built-in color corrector here because the shadows and highlights tool actually doesn't have a way to control the global saturation. So I'm just gonna take that down, negative 10. That's dropping at 10%. So that just takes a little bit of the edge off the saturation. And for the purposes of this demo, that is good enough. So let's pause from that and switch over to music. I am going to artlist.io. This is what I use for almost all of my YouTube videos. It's all pretty high quality stuff and the best part of it all is that it is a flat rate to access all the music and you can use it for any kind of a video. It can be a commercial video, it can be a wedding, it can be anything. Your license covers it and you can download unlimited tracks. So it's the best deal I found on music. So I'm putting a link 
to Artlist in the description of this video. Full disclosure, I am an Artlist affiliate. So if you sign up for Artlist, I do get commission for that. So I'm looking for two distinct moods of music. So the best place to start here is with the mood. Okay, first mood is gonna be something happy. So I could choose playful, hopeful, love, carefree, happy. And then I can also narrow it down a bit by video theme. Let's try road trip. So we've got into the blue here. Let's take a listen to this. Okay, maybe a little bit too reverent. Too high energy. You can use your mouse to skip to any point in the track if you just want to audition a certain part of it. You can also specify by which instruments you want to have in your song, by the genre. Ambient blues, hip hop. I think their best stuff tends to be full key, singer songwriter, or cinematic. So once I've found my song of choice, I'm just going to add it to the timeline, which you do by selecting it and then hitting Q. So that drops in right there. Okay, so now I'm just going to tweak the edit a bit and I will show you the finished results of the happy and the sad versions of the same footage. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed my version of this exercise. Feel free to post your own version in the comments here. The rules again are one camera, one lens, a gimbal if you've got one, shot in a single day, preferably over just a couple hours. I don't want you spending too long on this. The goal is really to stretch your editing abilities and your color grading abilities by taking the same footage and trying to work it a couple different ways. So get outside, have some fun, shoot some footage, and I will post a review video once I've gotten enough links in the comments. See you next time.